Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how I created this lion cub using graphite and I'll give you some tips along the way and show you the process step by step. I'm Kirsty Rebecca and I make drawing and painting tutorials that are easy to follow even if you're just starting out. So I'll just quickly go through the supplies that I'm using. So I've got a Derwent graphic in HB and I've got a Faber-Castell 3B and a 6B and you can use the same brand. It doesn't have to be Doen or Faber-Castell. You can use one or the other or whatever brand you have. I've got a Stadler Mars Lumograph in black 8B and this is a really dark pencil. It's darker than the Faber-Castell or the Derwent pencils will go. I've got a Derwent Graphi Tint in white, a paper blending stump, a Tombow Mono Eraser, which is just kind of like a mechanical pencil but with a little tiny eraser inside. And I've got just a simple mechanical pencil with a 4B lead inside. And then I've got a kneadable eraser and just a standard black eraser. It doesn't have to be black, you can use whatever eraser you have. And I'm working on Claire Fontaine Pastel Mat, which is kind of like a really smooth sanded paper, but you can use whatever drawing paper or watercolor paper you have. So I don't know if you can see there, but there's a really light outline of the lion cup that I've transferred using transfer paper. So I've started off by dipping my blending stump into my graphite powder and I'm going straight onto my artwork with that. And I'm going into the darker areas first because there'll be a lot more graphite on the blending stump initially after dipping it into the powder. Then as the excess graphite comes off of the stump, it leaves a lighter mark, which I can use to go into the mid-tones or into the lighter areas. So basically each time you dip the blending stump back in, you want to start in a darker area so you don't put too much graphite in a light area and make it look too dark. And you can see that I'm rotating the blending stump quite a bit and that's so that I can use the excess graphite around the entire edge of the blending stump, depending on whether I need it to be darker or lighter in that area. And for some reason I've decided to stop laying in the base layer with the graphite powder and go straight in with the details around the eyes. And I tend to do this a lot with my pieces and jump around to whichever area I want to work on and I build up my drawing in layers. But a lot of people find it easier to start with one part and then build up that part until it's complete before moving on to the next part. Some people will start in the top left hand corner or the ear and then finish that completely before moving on to the forehead. It's up to you how you work but I find it easier to adjust my values over the entire piece as I go. Here I'm using the Mars Lumograph 8B to block in the darkest parts around the eyes and I'm using the same pencil all over the face in the darkest areas. This pencil is really great because it's the darkest pencil I can find to use with graphite except for using a colored pencil. It's darker than the 9B Faber-Castell or Derwent graphic so it really makes the drawing pop. And now I'm going back in with that same blending stump, blending out some of the pencil strokes that I've made and I'm also going back and dipping into my graphite powder when I need it to be a little bit darker. If you don't have graphite powder, you can make your own by sanding your graphite pencils with some sandpaper, but realistically you can create the same effect using a few different shades of graphite pencils. You can just lay in your darks, your mid-tones and your lighter areas and then blend out your pencil with your fingers or a tissue or a cotton tip or blending stump. You don't need to use graphite powder but it's actually a cost effective and time saving way to get your base layers and background down. It's also very useful for softer effects because it's easier to lay down a softer stroke than it is to use a pencil and lay down a softer stroke. I'm going back in with my dark Mars Lumograph pencil and I also tend to switch between the blending stump and the pencil depending on the level of detail that I need in that area. For example, around the eyes and the ears, it's easier to get smaller details using the pencil than it is to use the blending stump. And here I'm going in with the Faber-Castell 3B which is the medium tone pencil just to get in some of those medium value areas. And I usually start by blocking in a lot of the darker areas because it helps me see if my values are right. If I have my darkest areas blocked in and the lightest areas being the white of my paper, then it's really easy to see how dark I need to go with the rest of my values. I find that if I start with any of my mid-tone areas first, I tend to make things too light or too dark and it's really hard to go back and fix it. Whereas if I start with the darkest and the lightest values, it's really easy to judge the values in between. Moving on to the background, I'm using the Faber-Castell 3B again, which is the medium shade, and I'm really lightly laying in the first layer. 
Then I'll go back through and lay my pencil strokes in the opposite direction so when I blend out the layer it will look a little bit smoother than if all my pencil strokes are going in the same direction. And I'm using the blending stump and I'm purposely using the leftover graphite on that stump to add some more graphite as well as blend out the strokes that I've already laid down. If I went straight in with the powder on the blending stump it would have looked a little bit blotchy because of how much graphite comes off in one go with the sanded surface in particular which is why I'm combining the graphite pencil with the powder on the stump to try and get a smoother transition. If you wanted a really smooth look, I would suggest using a smooth drawing paper or a hot pressed watercolour paper instead of this sanded paper like I'm using. It will always look a little bit more grainier with the pastel map, but the benefit is that you can apply a lot more layers of graphite with a sanded surface like this than you can with a smooth slick surface. So there's positives and negatives to each and I choose the paper depending on the subject that I'm doing. So if I were doing a portrait of a person where I need the face to be really smooth, I would lean towards the smoother surface so there'll be less texture showing through. Now that I have the base layer of the face down, I'm starting to go in with the details on the ear using a mechanical pencil. And I love using these because I don't have to waste time sharpening them and it saves me money because you, you aren't sharpening away your pencil every time you need a sharp point. It's already got that really sharp, sharp point as it is. So it's really great for fur texture and fur details. It's hard to buy darker leads for these or I can't find them at any local stores that I live near. But I find that the 4B LEDs are actually usually dark enough to do what I want them to do. The 4B is actually darker than most normal 4B in a graphite pencil. And I'm switching between the darker pencils and the mechanical pencil depending on what value I need. So if I need it to be a little bit darker, I'm going to go and use that Mars Lumograph instead. Then I'm going back through and blending out any of the pencil strokes that I don't want to be so harsh. And it's basically just a layering process until you get to the desired effect that you're after. And here you can see how I'm using that Tombow Mono Eraser. So I'm basically bringing out any of the highlights where I may have blended too much graphite into those areas. So it just helps lift up a little bit of that graphite. If you don't have one of these erasers, you can actually just get a normal eraser and then cut a, a corner off of it and then use the sharp edge to create the same sort of effect. I used to do this quite a lot before I invested in one of these erasers. And then I usually go back in with the mechanical pencil and just sharpen up around the areas where I've used that mono eraser. I'm alternating between the Mars Lumograph 8B and the white graphy tint to bring out those lightest lights and the darkest darks. Graphy tint is basically a tinted graphite that is water soluble. And when I use it on top of graphite like this, I don't add water to it because it can change the archival quality and the light fastness of the piece. If you want to add water to these graphy tint pencils, because they come in quite a lot of different colors as well, they can be really useful for an under layer or the base layer of your drawings. And then you can add water to that and then add your graphite on top. But make sure you do it in that order. So don't put your water soluble graphite on top of a normal graphite layer because it may change the archival and light fastness of your piece. I've gone and used the graphy tint on top of my graphite, but I'm not adding water to it. So that's what makes the difference. I usually use the white graphy tint after I've erased the area as white as I can get because if you go straight in with the graphy tint it doesn't work as well on top of darker shades. It will help you get some of those finer fur details on top of the darker graphite but it won't be pure white. But, but I like the effect it has and I don't really need those areas to be pure white. If you did need an area to be that perfectly white then the easiest way is to keep the white of the paper showing. Once you've added graphite to it, it's really hard to go back and lighten it back to the white of the paper. Another important thing to keep in mind is the direction of your pencil strokes. Even though we blend out the layers as we go, it won't blend out all the way. So it's important that we pay attention because the fur can change directions quickly. Look at your reference photo more than your artwork. For example, look at the nose area and how the direction of the fur changes a lot. So make sure you're really paying attention to your reference photo and where those fur directions change. The length of the stroke is also really important. If you have long pencil strokes on the nose, it will look like it has long fur. You can almost do little short strokes or even dots there to make it look short. You also don't have to draw every little detail of fur. When you look at an animal, you usually don't see every strand of fur. You look at it in clumps and clusters. So I try and draw it that way as well to make it look a little bit more realistic. 
You can include some strokes in the fur to indicate the texture and the direction, but the viewer's brain will automatically fill in those gaps and assume it's many strands of fur. If you include it every single stroke, it can actually look wiry unless you're working on a really large scale piece where you can actually get in those little tiny fur details and it will look natural and realistic from a distance. When you're working on a small scale like this, putting in every single little fur stroke will make it look like it has really thick wiry fur. If you find that you're getting graphite all over your hand or you're smudging your artwork, then try resting your hand on a piece of paper or a tissue so it's not directly touching your artwork. So I'm just continuing to darken up any of the areas that I think needs a little bit more attention, like around the nose and the eyes, just to make that area pop. When you're trying to create a realistic piece that pops off the page, your values are the most important thing to get right. Making sure that your shadows are dark enough and your highlights are light enough will really help make the piece look more realistic. The second most important thing is to make sure your original line drawing is as accurate as you can get it. A lot of artists think that adding more details will make the piece look more realistic, when in reality it's actually the accurate outline and the contrast in the lights and the darks that will make the piece look more realistic. If you work in a coloured medium like coloured pencils or pastels or even acrylic or oils, using a black and white medium regularly like graphite or just your black and white paints is a really great way to practice getting your values right. You don't have to worry about colours, you can just focus on your darks, getting your darks dark enough and your lights light enough. If you want an easy way to see if your values are right and to see if there's anything that needs changing, you can take a photo of your artwork and then check against your reference photo on your phone or on your computer side by side. This way you can easily spot the difference between the two and adjust your work accordingly. And I find that when you're working in pencil mediums like graphite here, if you press really lightly and then build up your darker areas in layers, rather than going straight in with a dark pencil and pressing really hard, it makes it easier to remove any graphite if you find that you've made a mistake and you need to lift up some of the graphite. It also makes it a lot easier to blend out your strokes in between each layer for a smoother finish than if you pressed really hard with your pencil to start with. And I usually tape down my work that I do on paper because it has this little border around the outside where there's no graphite on that area and that makes it a bit easier to hold the artwork or move it around or frame it without getting your fingers dirty or smudging the artwork. Another simple tip when you're working in black and white, make sure that you take your reference photo and convert that into black and white as well. It's so much easier to work from a reference photo that matches the material that you're working with rather than trying to convert the color reference image to black and white in your head while you're drawing. So in this piece, I really wanted the main focus to be on the eyes and the fur details on the face and the nose. So to achieve that, I've made the body of the lion cub really out of focus with barely any details in it, just to keep that attention in the middle of the page where the eyes and the ears and the nose are. Having the face in full detail and the body a little bit blurred also makes it look like the face is coming a bit more forward than the body, so it gives that bit of depth as well. And I'm just going through with that eraser and lightening up a lot of the areas where I thought that it had a bit too much graphite in there just to bring out that contrast to make the light bits look even lighter. So here you can see how I'm adding in those little fur details with the graphite tint and you can see that I'm constantly sharpening the graphite tint pencil to keep that really fine point and I'm also turning the pencil in my hand between each stroke just to use that like just to keep the sharp point even all the way around so it doesn't go blunt as quickly. And once I've got all the white part of the whiskers down, I'm actually going back through with a graphite pencil and just underlining those whiskers just to make them pop a little bit more off the background. And now I'm really looking at my reference photo and going back through with those final little details with the darkest pencil that I have and lightening up any areas that need lightening. I've got some other graphite and charcoal tutorials that I've put in a playlist on the screen there that I thought you might enjoy so click on that and I'll see you over there.